if you're going to add, if you want to garden organically, and you want to go to the hardware store, box store, garden center, what have you, and you want to buy fertilizer, look for something that has a label on it, OMRI. And that's a website you can go to, Organic Materials Review Institute. That means that that substance is certified organically, as, a, as an organic, uh, certified organically, safe to use for organic gardening. There's also another list, it's not going to be on the package, you have to look it up, the National Organic Program, you can look that up and find things that are, that, that are organic or not organic that you can use, that you shouldn't be using. So primarily the best thing to do is look for OMRI or make your own fertilizer, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Always read and follow the label instructions, <clears throat> and again, an objective of organic gardening is to build your soil, and let your soil feed your plants so you're not constantly hauling synthetic fertilizers and adding them. Most synthetic fertilizers are short release. Uh, they don't last a long time. A little Osmocote type products last longer, but organic synthetic fertilizers are made to immediately feed your plants. Organic fertilizers are made to add to the soil that the soil microorganisms break them down and then make them available to the plants when nature does it. So you're not, you, you use synthetic fertilizers, generally you're short-circuiting that process. Well, we all know that the NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, are the primary nutrients. If you do a soil test and you get back a recommendation to add, you know, so many pounds of 10, 10, 10 fertilizer per, I think it's 1,000 square feet. Um, they're talking about NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. That's what you're going to get back, and you can build your own fertilizer. We'll talk about that again in a minute. Uh, if, your, if your soil test does recommend fertilizers, apply only at the rate and ratio recommended. Some people tend, tend to think if a little bit of fertilizer is good, a lot of fertilizer is better, and that you know, don't do that. And also, um, a quick thing on fertilizing tomatoes. A lot of people like to really put the fertilizer for the tomatoes to try to grow really big tomato plants. Or you're going to grow really big tomato plants, but too much nitrogen in, in a tomato plant will grow a giant plant, but not much fruit. You want to, you, you, for, uh, tomatoes are one of those things that do better with slight nutrient deficiency. You don't want that plant putting a lot of energy in growing leaves. You want to grow fruit. And so many people, they just want to fertilize that thing to death. And you get these giant, you know, jack and bean stalk style tomato plants, but not many fruits. So be careful with, with that. Here's a, a uh, extension publication of the University of Georgia, I touched on that earlier, converting your soil test results that you'll get back from your soil test to a homemade organic fertilizer. It's very easy to do. Uh, this, this link will be in the thing that we're going to put on the uh, Facebook for the farmer's market. And I like that one because it comes from the, from the Department of Extension Service out of Georgia. There's also one that I use, and you can, you can just look this one up yourself. If you do a web search on Steve Solomon um, homemade organic fertilizer, uh, you can even add Mother Earth News. The article was first published in Mother Earth News. That's the fertilizer I use. You mix it up and you add it once at the beginning of the season and you don't add it again for the whole season. Um, what you can do is take the, the main ingredient for that fertilizer, which is a seed meal, S-E-E-D meal, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And you can side dress with that through the season. But you only add the complete fertilizer once. And again, if you're going to bring home fertilizer, make sure it's OMRI listed. You can buy ready-made organic fertilizers from most garden centers now. And so we're going to go over some constituents that are actually organic fertilizers that, that are locally available. And these come from Georgia Carpet Extension. Uh, blood meal, a lot of people have used blood meal. A lot of people have used bone meal. Um, what I've got to the side is, the, is sort of the average analysis of the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium content. And since these things, some of these things are sold as fertilizers, some are not, and not necessarily labeled as a fertilizer. So sometimes you have to look up, like, uh, like green sand, for example, you may have to look up what the actual nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium content is. But uh, bone meal, blood meal, a lot of people have used that. Fish emulsion is a really good, uh, liquid concentrate fertilizer you can use for organic gardening. Uh, granite dust, a little harder to find around here because it's, it's, you got to ship it in with that granite around here. But it adds lots of important trace elements. It's easy to get the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium nutrients. It's harder to get the trace elements. And the trace elements are really important. And when you buy a synthetic fertilizer, 
and bring it home from the garden center, you're not going to get trace of it. It's generally in there. It's just nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and it's going to be a fast release fertilizer. Uh, green sand, uh, phosphate, alfalfa meal. Alfalfa meal is a really, really good fertilizer. Uh, you can use alfalfa meal just like it is. So is cotton seed meal. I use cotton seed. Uh, you can buy that at uh, co-op or um, there may be a few other places in town that still if I haven't looked, I just buy it at the co-op. comes in, I think, a 40-pound bag, 40 or 50-pound bag. Um, it's just really good stuff. I tried soybean meal, and I didn't like it. It's, it's kind of like cracked corn is what it looks like. Uh, cotton seed meal and alfalfa meal look like, looks kind of like dirt almost. It's a really good soil amendment and it's a good fertilizer just by itself. You can see cotton seed meal typically nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, uh, 6, 2.5, and 1.7. Kelp, you can actually find here. Uh, obviously, kelp comes from the ocean. It's dry, ground up kelp. It has tremendous value in terms of, of trace elements. Um, you can see there's not much value there in the way of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, but that's not what you're getting it for. It's some trace elements. Uh, it's a really good, really good fertilizer. And then there's some free stuff that you can get and collect around your property, around your neighborhood, and add to your garden that are very important. Uh, and these come from a book <clears throat> by Paul Tucky. It's actually a book called Organic Lawn Care Manual. It's a really, really, really good book. Um, I like it a lot, and it's things that are applicable more than just your lawn. Uh, but anyway, these are some free substances with the average uh, chemical analysis that, that you might find on these typically. Coffee grounds. Uh, if you drink coffee, you've got coffee grounds. And most people put those in the trash. It's such a waste. Uh, it's good organic matter. Just put it in your compost bin. Compost, we talked about making compost. Uh, grass clippings, we talked about that. Uh, something especially in the fall to add to your garden along with shredded leaves. And cover crops, we talked about that. These are free things that basically shouldn't cost you anything. Leaves, shredded leaves, dry horse manure. If you know somebody that has horses, the stable, when they clean out the stables, they got a mixture of uh, maybe straw, maybe wheat straw, it may be uh, sawdust, and then horse manure. That is really good stuff. I like to pile it, let it decompose first. What does it, uh, uh, okay. what does it mean that it's cured? It's, it's rotted, decomposed. Oh. decomposed. Yeah. yeah, so I'll take it, I'll bring it home, uh, put it in a pile, and it's quite a lot of compost, but I'll put it in one pile by itself and let it break down. And then once it breaks down a little bit, you can tell it kind of starts breaking down almost into dirt. Then I add it to the garden. Or add it to your garden in the fall, straight from the horse barn, and let it break down over the winter. Do you ever do manure tea? I do. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Good. That's cool. Tea bags, are they equally okay? Do they have something there? No, the tea bag, the tea's fine in the bags, but I found that some of the, 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 the bag itself, yeah. they don't break down. Oh, really? So yes. most of those are like a polyester kind of thing or, or synthetic. And so I'll be picking up tea bags all the time. Oh, just, just, break just, break the tea yeah, out. the tea's fine. The tea bag's not going to hurt anything. Yeah. It's just not going to break down. It doesn't break down. No, it sure doesn't. And wood ash. If you if you burn wood, if you get a fire pit, you can add wood ash. So a lot of coffee shops. Also, you can get coffee grounds. A lot of coffee shops will bag their grounds up either in these bags made for that purpose. Or you can just go and ask them if they got coffee grounds, and they'll give you a great big bag full of coffee grounds. Um, pretty good. Leaves. This is, uh, I'm kind of a leaf bandit in the fall. I ride around the neighborhood, around town, looking for leaves on the side of people's yards, on the side of the street. And I'll knock on the door and ask them if they mind if I get their leaves. Nobody said no yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll even, I'll, when it comes to pine straw, I'll even rake your yard. If you got pine straw and you don't want to fool with it, call me. I'll come rake it and bring it home. As a mulch, uh, I love pine straw. I love, and you can't you can't collect too many leaves. You think you have enough leaves in your just just you need a mountain of leaves. And what you one thing you can do if it's not too unsightly, you can just store them in those bags. And then as you have time, take them out, put them in compost pile, shred them, let them break down. When that's gone, get another bag and dump it in there. But you you can't have too many leaves in the fall. Leaves are a really good source of brown matter to add to your compost. Because your compost is going to get, at some point, it's probably going to get a little bit stinky because it's too green. And leaves is really about the best thing to add, shredded leaves. And so always keep, year-round, you need shredded leaves around your garden. <clears throat> compost tea. Do you do compost tea? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I do. 
um, a friend who raises chickens. Okay. And I get lots of <laughs> yeah. chicken poop. And, and the straw? Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. And, and uh, just put it in it. It's really neat the way she does it because I have two buckets. The top bucket has holes in it. Mm -hmm. The bottom bucket does not. So you put the, the, the manure in the top, fill the bucket up with water, and let it sit for two weeks. And then pull it out and you mix that with water because it's real strong. Do it again, and on the third time, you can take the, the manure out of the top bucket and spread it. Okay. That's fine. By the wow, that's pretty neat. Yeah. It's clever. I like that. That's one way of doing compost. Another way of doing compost tea um, is using your compost, okay. actually. Um, it's real easy. It's real simple. Um, basically, it's, uh, it's a five-gallon bucket, a little 10-gallon, say, aquarium bubbler, you know, the thing you plug in the wall and put the hose in there and the stone and the bubbles come up. One of those. And some kind of mesh bag, preferably like a nylon mesh bag with a maybe a plastic zipper so it won't rust. And somebody told me once it's a delicate garment bag. I think that's what I'm using actually from the wash. Um, <clears throat> so put a scoop of compost, finished compost, on your compost man, in that mesh bag and zip it up or tie it up. Put the mesh bag in the water in the five gallon bucket. Add one tablespoon of molasses preferably blackstrap molasses. That's adding the nutrients to feed the bacteria. Doesn't take much. Uh, plug in your aquarium pump, put the bubbler stone in the bottom, and then let it run. And your compost tea is going to be ready, in this case, in about 24 to 36 hours. Um, it's a slow-release balanced fertilizer. It also has some antifungal properties. So there's been a lot of success in using this on tomatoes control fungal diseases that all tomatoes get, and also adding a, a foliar feeding uh, fertilizer, and also fertilizing the ground bottom of the plant themselves. So it's easy to do. It looks kind of like this. Disregard the back two chests. So there's the aquarium pump. It's plugged in the wall. Here's the hose that goes down the floor and goes inside. It's got a little stone on it. Bubbles are coming out. No fish. Um, and then there's a plastic bag in the middle sitting in there full of compost, and you add one tablespoon of molasses. Blackstrap molasses has more trace elements in it good for your plants than just molasses, regular molasses. And it's available at most of the grocery store. So anyway, that's how you do it. Now one thing, if you can take that, once you're done, just turn it off, take the bubbler stone out. I take this mesh bag out, let it drain for a second, for a minute or so, and then I dump that back in my compost, in my fresh compost. And it sort of supercharges your compost pile because it's got lots of, uh, of nutrients and, and, and organisms in it, uh, bacterial organisms, microorganisms. Um, then you're going to take this and do one of two things with it. If you're going to water the base of plants to fertilize them, you can pour it right out of the bucket around the base of the plants. If you're going to put it in a watering can, you know, with the rose on the end of it, with the hose in it, then you're going to want to strain that through something, a filter, because it's going to have some debris in it, and that'll clog up your watering can. You said my fungicide properties. In this case, in fact, tomatoes, you probably would want to drench the leaves. To yes, the yes. Purpose to change it all over the plant. In that case, you're going to use a watering can uh -huh. with the rose on the end of it, just yeah. to disperse like a shower hand, and soak the whole plant. Yeah. So it has some antifungal properties, and it's also an excellent foliar applied fertilizer. Really good stuff, easy to do, and kind of fun.